Yena Nigriniad Vikshiptam Kama Boga Yohu Suprasanang Laye Chaiva Yata Kamo Layastata The mind distracted by desires and enjoyments, as also the mind enjoying pleasure in oblivion, trance like condition of samadhi should be brought under discipline by the pursuit of proper means, for the state of oblivion is as harmful as desires. And here's Shankara's commentary. One practicing yoga meets with four kinds of obstacles that block realization of the highest reality. Laya, a state of oblivion, yogic samadhi or deep sleep. Vikshepa, distraction. Sukha, happiness in temporary success. And Raga, attachment to a particular phase of realization. The mind should be trained to avoid these obstacles. The means are described in the next karaka. Namaste. So there are two kinds of yogis. The yogis who follow the path of will, as for example, described in Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, and the yogis who follow the indescribable path, the path given here in the Mandukya Upanishad and its karakas and commentaries. And the ones who follow the path of will find that their progress is obstructed in these four ways. And the one that's especially sneaky, well, they're all kind of sneaky. <laughs> but yogic samadhi is praised very much in several texts on yoga. But what is it really? Here, Shankara portrays it as a distraction. And why is that? Because it's trying to avoid the suffering and agitation of material existence by entering a state resembling deep sleep, sushupti. Now, See, the thing about this that's complicated is all of these states are at one point meaningful and desirable mileposts on the path of yoga. For example, samadhi, and there are others also. We'll get to them later. But samadhi is held up as the ideal. This is the goal. This is what you're trying to reach. Well, it's only one goal. And once you reach it, you have to continue. You have to go farther. See, this yogic path stretches to infinity. There's no end to it. There is no final goal. If there was, it wouldn't be the real thing. It wouldn't be the authentic path. It would be a religion. It would be just an exercise. It wouldn't really lead to the highest bliss. So this is why Shiva and Shakti go on and on creating universes and going through all these pastimes and activities and then destroying them and then starting over again. So Samadhi, once you attain it, it means you have mastered the state of sushupti consciousness. So, very good. But now, <laughs> the next step is to master Turiya. And Turiya is the stage, of course, of Jnana Yoga. Once you have mastered meditation and you can attain Samadhi at will, the next stage is you have to reach the substrate of all consciousness. 
the Brahman or the Atma, the self with a capital S. So this means you have to go beyond Samadhi and not try to run away, not try to avoid the other states of consciousness where there is form, where there is change, where there is activity, huh? where there is identity and individuality and cause and effect. Oh, my God. The only reason these are a distraction, what is the term here? Vikshepa is because we get attached. We get identified with the forms, the mind, the body, the senses, possessions, relationships, titles and designations, and so on and so on. And then we become disturbed when they change or go away or fail. If the mind is actually stable, if the mind is actually situated properly on not samadhi, but turiya, these things are not a distraction at all. They're simply a play, a temporary maya, temporary phenomena, temporary illusions. Like when we see on a hot day, we look in, off in the distance on a road and we might see what appear to be puddles on the road. Or we might see like waves huh, of diffraction in the air due to heat. But these aren't real. It looks like stuff is happening. It looks like something is there, but it's not. So in the same way, one who is situated properly in Turiya sees all these different phenomena, including samadhi in, in sushupti, including dreams in svapna, including the mind, body, and senses, and the world in jagrat. But they do not move him. They do not distract him. They do not become an obstacle because he doesn't identify with them. He doesn't go running after them, trying to enjoy them, or running away from them, trying to avoid them. Neither. Because he realizes all these are simply maya. They don't really exist. They only seem to exist because they impinge on the senses and they involve the body and the sense of egoic individuality, the empirical self. But the empirical self is also maya because it changes. First, we think, oh, I'm a little baby. And then we think, oh, I'm a child. And then we become a young rascal. <laughs> and an adolescent, and then an adult, and then a parent, and maybe even a grandparent. Along the way, we take up some occupation and we produce all kinds of byproducts and results, effects of our work. And then the body begins to dwindle and disappear. And finally, there's death. And then one has to go on to the next body or whatever, according to one's qualification. So this is the cycle of life. It is created by higher authorities. It is, strictly speaking, a, an illusion. It's maya. But still, we perceive it. And because we perceive it, we have to do so many things. We have so many duties in the world. Because we perceive the world, we have to worship its creator and so on and perform many duties and activities and so on to maintain the body. Otherwise, we suffer. 
And that becomes a big distraction. So what I'm getting at here is that the means, which are going to be summarized in the next shloka, the means include all four yogas. Karma yoga, bhakti yoga, raja yoga, and finally jnana yoga in the different states of consciousness. Jagra, Svapna, Sushupti, and Turiya. Until one masters all these four yogas, one is sure to be distracted, number one, to fall into samadhi or deep sleep, number two, to have a distraction of happiness by one's temporary success in yoga, thinking, oh, I attained this. I'm so good, you know. <laughs> this is called sukha, happiness due to realization. It's very nice that you've attained it, but as you will see if you have any experience on this path, after every attainment, there's a test. Maya will test you. Sometimes these tests are very unpleasant. And so one should not be distracted or discouraged. One should recognize the tests for what they are and get beyond them by good training in habitual sadhana, discipline of the mind and senses. It's there to get us through hard times. And hard times will come, no matter how successful we are. Even like Ramana Maharshi, so highly realized being, still had to suffer cancer in the late part of his life. So see, everyone has to go through these things. And therefore, the disciplines of sadhana are there to protect us from these distractions. And what's the fourth one? Ah, raga. Attachment to a particular stage of realization. In uh, Thailand, among Buddhist monks, this is called sitting on the flagpole. <laughs> You're afraid to come down because you've attained something at the cost of great effort and you want to enjoy it. But you can't move either. You can't do anything. You can't go forward. You can't go backward. Because of why? You're attached. Huh? You think, I am this, whatever, the stage you're at in yoga. And so we see people all the time who have attained a little bit on some aspect of the path. And then they get stuck there. It becomes their identity. They think, I am, you know, like a bhakta or a hatha yogi or a meditator or a Buddhist or an, a neo Advaitin <laughs> or whatever. And they get stuck. They can't move forward and they can't move backward. They don't want to lose their attainment and they're afraid to come down and be humble and admit that they have farther to go. Well, we always have farther to go. If the path were not eternal, it wouldn't be spiritual. It wouldn't be fully transcendental. So there always is more. And this goes on eternally. So this is our message in a nutshell. All four states of consciousness are available all the time to everyone. And all four flavors of yoga should be practiced simultaneously in these four states of consciousness. And this is the real stable state of self-realization. Aung Tatsa. Aung Shakti Aung. Aum Namah Shivaya.